Hello everybody. Since I first picked up OTP20 at Christmas in 2020, there's been no greater usage of my free time than playing these baseball simulator games. To me, OTP has brought far greater depth and higher quality than any baseball simulator by a mile. Uh, 21 and 22 both substantially improved the game in my book, and as understandable as the hiccups were at launch, 23 was a little bit of a step back from 22, but ultimately the patches throughout the lifetime of the game made a big deal, and I think 23 was also a very strong game in the OTP repertoire. So, I originally ended up making a 90 minute long video covering issues that I had with OTP 24 now that we're approaching, or we are past essentially the end of its life cycle, and how I would like to see them fixed in 25 and 26. But then I came to a realization of the core problem and uh, essentially making a video on what this is would make a lot more sense. So it pains me greatly to say this, but the fact of the matter is simple. OTP as a game and as a company are headed in the wrong direction. Before we get into exactly what I mean by that and what this means for the future of the game, I want to get into why this video is being made in the first place. Uh, essentially, with OTP24, we went from a game that got clear improvements to a gameplay every single edition annually, and it was a stretch to upgrade every year, uh, obviously, since the improvements were relatively minimal, but I still thought it was worth it. Oh, 20 to 21, 21 to 22, paying 20 to $40 a year, still worth it overall, in my opinion, um, even if you're just playing simple offline games every now and then. To what we have basically with OTP24, um, which is a pretty, in my eyes, clear, disgusting crash grab that has prioritized flashiness over gameplay. Um, even just ignoring issues like crashes being a lot more frequent and glitches with the game being a lot more frequent than in the past. Um, Anyways, it's definitely the state of the base game that made me feel like this video had to be made, um, especially since Perfect Team, as you know, has been getting grosser for years up to this point. But I do want to mention that Perfect Team has been getting more aggressively monetized each year, and I will dive into that. Um, and the way that PT has been handled is a major problem for me. I would not have even noticed of it if, if it weren't for the issues with the base game this year. But we're going to get into a lot of really problematic things with Perfect Team that I've noticed on this version of OTP in particular, but in general, just scaling up from the past. Uh, anyways, the reason I'm making this video isn't to say that you shouldn't buy or enjoy OTP, and certainly not to restrict you from doing so. Um, I love this game myself, and obviously I buy every version of it. I've played Perfect Team, or at least I used to play Perfect Team, and I want to see this game continue to improve. I am making this video to call out OTP for greedy and nasty design choices in the hopes that they will be corrected in the future and that the game will continue to improve. Uh, and I do not want to see them continue practices that are predatory and harmful to consumers, the very people they're selling their game to. Essentially, I see this game right now taking the first steps towards becoming an EA sports game. And I do not want to see it continue down that dark path. So first of all, let's jump into what it is about 24 that I find particularly problematic. The number one issue is what the gameplay looks like. In the past, each OTP version felt like a pretty linear improvement over the prior. The new game typically genuinely was worth buying to me. The fact that 24 released with such a clearly weakened AI, financial logic, and other basic things about a baseball simulator is really sad. Frankly, if I was OTP, I would be embarrassed to release a game as bad as 24. But obviously there has to be a reason that the game's logic is worse, right? Well, my theory about this has to do with the ridiculous number of features that they added to the game. In the past, OTP typically introduced or reworked two to three things on each game that had a clear and direct improvement to the gameplay itself. But with 24, we've got real-time simulation statistics that tell you basically nothing and you won't even see if you're just doing the simulation mode. You've got 
uh, a trade deadline date that fundamentally does not work in the environment that the trades function in OTP. You've got a completely reputation, pointless uh, trade reputation system. You have an overhaul to the difficulty of the trade AI that just makes the game less fun. You have changes to the development engine and the international amateur system that completely unbalance the young player acquisition process. Woo! Essentially, these changes were designed to look and sound cool to casual fans and try to expand the game's audience to new fans. However, it's painfully obvious that OTP developments didn't bother to think through what these changes would actually do for the game. Since most of them do not enhance the experience and all of them damage the game's balance in some way. The only change that I thought was well implemented were adjustments to the scouting system. The rest have left us with a hilariously unbalanced financial system, terrible AI for trades, general transactions, and more, and a prospect development system that is somehow just as unbalanced and gameable as previous versions, despite making changes that were supposed to directly address that. I'm not going to dive too deep into why each feature was a failure, as that could be a whole video of its own, and as I mentioned, I spent 90 minutes essentially ranting about it previously but the end game the end, the result of the game is just that it is not fun to play or at least it's not as fun as its predecessor or the one before that or the one before that or the one before that for comparison i don't think there was a single change made between otps 21 and 23 three whole games uh the other versions that i've upgraded to where i couldn't directly see how it made the game better this is a huge failure on OTP side of things. Or at least it would be if making a good game was the purpose of 24. Also, I want to point out that in the past, OTP actually got significantly better between its patches. Um, I thought that the AI was improved very clearly between the beginning and end of a life cycle in each of OTP 20 through 23. Uh, and other improvements were just generally made to the game. But in 24, it felt like they put on lazily crafted band-aids um, that just shifted the issue rather than fixed it. The game isn't as broken as it was on launch, especially in terms of the performance and crashes, but it's still easily the worst OTP game that I've ever played, even worse than 20, which is really saying something for a franchise that improved clearly version to version. Now let's talk for a relatively brief amount of time about Perfect Team. As a full disclosure, I have not played PT since 22, so I do not have intimate knowledge about the game and its inner workings at the moment, and most of the information that I am working with here is secondhand, though I do think it is very reliable and from people who are at the upper echelons of PT. If anything, the fact that I haven't played PT since 22, and I still can see all of these issues of hostile monetization, it makes it an even bigger issue. Let's start with the elephant in the room, or should I say the whale. Essentially, in gacha games, there are two ways that you can make money. The first way is to try to get everyone who plays to spend a little bit of money, say an average of 5 to $10 across a large number of users. The second way is to really hook a few people who are irresponsible with their money and get them to spend absurd amounts. This is known as whaling. The latter process has been the goal of PT since its launch, and it's bad. Uh, in PT 21 and 22, the two versions that I played by far the most, uh, whales existed and they had a competitive advantage, but it was not absolute. Uh, you could still be free to play and compete at even the highest levels if you knew what you're doing. For example, I made Perfect League in PT 21, despite the fact that I started a few months into the cycle. But in 22, and especially 23 and 24, the game made some macro changes that directly encouraged big spending. The most notable of these was increasing the power creep rate of the game, so essentially having the best cards in each format and in open and league play, etc. Uh, having them regularly usurped by new content releases and diluting what used to be the best options with more cards of that caliber. This meant that you have to spend a lot more PT to maintain a top tier team since you regularly have to swap out the most expensive cards. But it's not just league play. 
often you need to participate in tournaments to win supplementary cards for your team or increase your funds in the past, but power creep in tournament formats also went up. And this makes it even more expensive to maintain those formats. So everywhere, your team is more pricey to make. The introduction and heightening of limited edition cards in recent versions has further perpetuated the practice. Ultimately, the game is targeted at getting you invested, getting you competitive, having you fall out of competitiveness, getting upset that you do not have the resources to be competitive, therefore enticing you to spend a lot of money to become competitive again. The fact that there is an option to pay $100 at once, two and a half times the price of the game in a single transaction, says it all. The fact that this exists as an addition to a full price game is just disgusting to me. Then there's the biggest change to monetization in PT24, PT+. This is an attempt to get into the first type of gotcha profit by trying to encourage everyone to pay a little bit, but even so, this is clearly a whaling practice. For only $7 a month, you get substantial bonuses to grinding and rewards, access to exclusive ballparks, and discounts on perfect point purchases. Seriously, the highest threshold for the PP discount is $500 plus. What ordinary person is paying that money? It's very clear that PT Plus is really more of a way to get whales to spend more and to trap more of them than anything else. Plus, if you actually do subscribe to PT Plus all year and you're not paying for any perfect points or anything, that's still $84, which is more than double the price of the game. The financial system here works like a crappy free-to-play game, but even greedier than most. <laughs> And it's built in as a side mode to a full price $40 simulation game. I overlooked this problem somewhat in previous versions of PT, the ones that I actually played, because those didn't reward the massive investment system nearly as much as they do now. And you could still win, obviously, without paying. But these practices, even in prior versions of PT, are just beyond disgusting, and I'm really surprised that myself and others haven't noticed or called them out prior previously. This type of thing is somehow even worse than what you could expect to find in an EA Sports game. I would like to take a moment here to discuss the exclusive home parts, which it's not necessarily the biggest problem, but is very significant. In prior versions of OTP, you could theoretically achieve everything a pay-to-win whale could with perfect market play, tournament success, and luck. But by locking certain park options behind a paywall, OTP has officially made it impossible to do something without paying for the first time in PT history. And again, a whopping $84 on top of the $40 you already spend to get the game in the first place is required to get this. That's $120, which is two full price other games. Like, I could get Nintendo games, two Nintendo games for $120. Or I could play PT Plus and have access to ballparks. It's absurd. The last thing I want to talk about in the PT front is the culture that the company has fostered for the community. I've played a lot of games. I've at least forayed into a lot of community, but I have never seen a culture so toxic, nor policing of it by a company so anti-consumer as OTPs. And this is perhaps the single biggest problem with the game, and also probably part of why no one's made a video like this before. Dissent and criticism, even when it's purely constructive and coming from a good place, is discouraged at best and bannable at worst. Whales hold power and can basically ask whatever they want of the company. Don't like a user? Well, let's get them blacklisted and banned. Want a rule change for a specific tournament format? Sure, let's get it done. It goes the other way as well as the whales actively feed into the, toxic, the toxicity of the community culture, the competitiveness of everything, encourage spending, and fight dissent to the company's practices because obviously if the company didn't have them, it would be harder for them to compete. 
I've not been involved directly enough in the OTP mainstream community since I myself made an enemy of the whales and was blacklisted over a little over two years ago. But I have heard horror stories from my colleagues, and it is not pretty. It is a borderline dystopian reality, which is hilarious for a baseball simulator game. I don't want to spend too much time on why we are where we are, since this is already likely going to be a pretty long video and it doesn't matter that much anyway, but I will touch on it a little bit. For starters, I truly think Marcus created OTP from a good place, but the man has publicly said that he's happy to be sitting on a monopoly and writing his success, so it's clear that the profits have been a priority for a while. That said, the game was still fun and enjoyable and improved every year until come to us acquired it and it's still too early to know for sure if this is directly thanks to their influence or if it's at least playing a role but looking at other come to us games like mlb nine innings it's very clear that they see an opportunity to turn this game into a gotcha style game for a gotcha company and make otp more of an ea style game I know I've been making that comparison for a while, and I've actually fought it myself in the past, but it is genuinely where we stand right now, and we need to stop looking at it as, well, there's things that are different, and just accept the reality of the greedy practices that are being encompassed by OTP right now. The last thing I want to cover here is what I semi-realistically want to see changed in the game to keep this franchise alive and ensure that it remains at least somewhat friendly to consumers and at a reasonable level of quality going forwards. First off, the direction OTP24 took the base game, it, it just cannot be something that they lean into. They need to go back to the formula of prior games. New features in a game actually need to work and be well thought out. Just go back to how the game changed in prior versions. I know we're probably too late in 25's development cycle for this to be truly incorporated uh, and to alter the vision as a whole, but at the very least by 26, fix the issues you've created, make that the priority of the game, and then go back to your old formula. The way that the community is managed has got to change. Frankly, it needed to change years ago, but whatever. Slowly ease the whales out of power. Focus on real community feedback. Moderate fairly and rein in toxic whale behavior instead of enabling it. Take criticism to heart instead of taking it personally. Finally, if you want to make the monetization of PT more reasonable, which I really think this is unrealistic given where we are and the fact that it's been getting worse every year, um, and I know it will not be completely removed or scaled back too much, but please, for starters, drop the price of PT Plus to $1 or $2 a month. It should actually fit into the first type of gotcha monetization, where it is a smaller investment that people can make as casual players without breaking the bank or being truly a whale feeder, which is what it is right now. Competing, if paying $12 to $24 to compete, I mean, again, it is a side mode for a full price game. This should not be a thing at all. But if you're going to have it, twelve to twenty-four dollars to be to be given a chance to compete is a lot more reasonable than eighty-four. The less prohibitive cost would make it a lot less disgusting and a lot more appealing to more people. Obviously, I'd prefer to see the whole system gone, but dropping the price would help. And again, it may not even hurt your profits that much because more people will buy PT Plus if it is a reasonable price. Get rid of the general PP discount from the PT Plus as well. And if you are going to have a perfect point discount, just make it universal and make it really small. Make it like a 5% discount on all PP purchases rather than giving a 20% discount for the $500 club. Stop the whale feeding. You already do more than enough to farm whales. You don't need PT Plus to be another source of that. And most importantly, do not lock a feature behind a paywall. Put the ballparks back into the public domain and uh, scale back the power creep so it grows at a more reasonable pace for free-to-play players to manage. You don't have to go back to where it was in 21, but at least where it was in 22, please. Investing hundreds of dollars in a game should never be the only way to compete. Anyways, I want to conclude this with my final thoughts. I honestly do not see OTP making any of the changes I listed above, any of them.
In fact, I fully expect that we'll head the opposite direction and see more toxic predatory behavior. As the consumer, I implore you to be aware of these tactics and to be wise to OTP's attempts to literally snatch your wallet. That said, this game is still not too far gone yet, except maybe for Perfect Team, which is pretty bad, and there is a real chance that we can still save it. That said, while it would take a lot for me to stop buying new OTP games, I can now see a world where by 27 or 28, I just can't continue to support a company that is participating in such an awful, greedy practice. And I'm warning you all right now, keep an eye out for when it crosses that line and just reaches the point of no return. You should be prepared to drop this franchise if they become too greedy. Or I should say, if they continue to be too greedy. Now, if you want to leave a comment disagreeing with me, that is totally fine. And I will respect your thoughts as long as you respect mine. However, please, and not just to commenters here, but to everyone watching, whether you agree with me or not, please really think about what I have said today. Really think about everything and what it means. And think about your own thoughts. Why do you choose to defend OTP if that's your opinion? Or why do you choose to agree with me if you do? If anyone from OTP is watching this, I have a direct message to you. I know there are good people at the company who really care about the game and care about making good content. I've met a few of you. Please do everything in your power to make sure that OTP remains a quality experience going forwards. Please fight against the greedy practices that we have come to see from this game in the recent versions. And as always, everyone, thank you all for watching. I likely will not put out another video on OTP until I release a review of 25 when that game comes out. But in the meantime, I will probably be making a few more videos on other stuff to look out for in the meantime, since there are things that I like a lot more than OTP right now, and I want to talk about some of them. Anyways, everyone, I will see you on the next one.